Hello everyone! This is Sorry and Target welcoming you back to another entry in our Carnivores Ranked series, where today we are going to be ranking all of, um, most of? Hold on. One, two, three. Well, look, we're ranking a lot of the dinosaurs in the Beta 1.99 release of the fan favorite anniversary tour, Carnivores Plus. So as with our other Carnivores Ranked videos, in addition to my own personal opinions, I have a set of criteria that I use to rank these creatures, like textures, animations, colors, lore impact, you guys know how this goes at this point. But another key criteria I use that the Carnivore series is so well known for is immersive sound work, and a lot of the DLC creatures in Carnivores Plus are in a preliminary release stage with no sound effects at all right now. No calls, no idle sounds, no footsteps, nothing. So for this list today, we will be excluding the DLC dinosaurs that do not feature any sounds yet, since that's a big part of why I also don't include map ambience in these lists. And since sound work is such a big part of what individualizes each dinosaur, it'd be unfair to judge them while they're missing what makes them their own unique characters. However, as Carnivores Plus receives more updates and the DLC dinosaurs receive more polish and sound effects, we will keep this list updated to reflect those changes. And I know I've talked about, and even ranked, most of the legacy Carnivores dinosaurs from the official games before a lot here on the channel, but I'm still going to include them on this list because they are a part of the mod's lore and provide a nice measuring stick for the newcomers. So this will be a good place to provide some condensed, up-to-date thoughts on the legacy dinosaurs while seeing how the new Carnivores Plus dinosaurs stack up to the originals. And remember, this is just my personal, opinionated ranking of the Carnivores Plus dinosaurs. Be sure to let me know what your list looks like down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's begin our list at number 17. Topping off our list at number 17 is the classic flying reptile Dimorphodon. Dimorphodon is one of the legacy carnivores creatures that's been around since the very beginning, the first aerial ambient creature that debuted 22 years ago, all the way back in Carnivores 1. And there's really not much more I can say about it than I said about Patinosaurus in my Carnivores Triassic ranked video. This little flying reptile serves its role well, its calls are nice, its animations are good, but it doesn't have much impact on the mod as a whole besides adding some life to the sky. And because Carnivores Plus uses the Carnivores 2 engine instead of the Ice Age engine like Triassic, Dimorphodon actually has some competition up there with another aerial creature. And by comparison, I find Dimorphodon to be the weaker of the two. Again, not a bad creature by any means, just by comparison with the rest of the creatures populating the world, Dimorphodon has trouble standing out and making an impact, and someone had to end up at the bottom of this list, so I'm afraid that's Dimorphodon at number 17. Moving down to number 16 is the fleet-footed ornithopod Gallimimus. Another legacy dinosaur that's been around since the very first Carnivores game, and even made it back for the reboot, Gallimimus was actually the very first creature I ever took down in Carnivores 2 at 6 years old, before I even knew how to move around in the game. So naturally it holds a pretty special place in my heart. It's also held the distinction of being the only ambient dinosaur in any official Carnivores game until 2013, when Pelicanomimus was introduced in Carnivores HD, and you'd be hard pressed to find a Carnivores player who hasn't instinctively blasted a Gallimimus in self-defense because they thought it was a Velociraptor, or ignored a distant Velociraptor because they thought it was a Gallimimus. This dinosaur has such a fun history with the Carnivores games. But again, like most ambient creatures, when compared with the rest of the mod's creature roster, its gameplay interaction is somewhat limited, and it kinda blends in just a little too well. So Gallimimus comes in at number 16. Taking the number 15 spot is the first huntable creature on so many dino hunt tours, including this one, Parasaurolophus. <laughs> When I close my eyes and think of carnivores, a lot of images come to mind. 
Fort Siskin, Basmashi Rocks, shooting a T-Rex in the eye, playing carnivores Triassic after school, my friends and I running out of the room terrified as a predator attacked, lots of fun warm memories ingrained into my subconscious. But among them is the franchise's depiction of Parasaurolophus, the very first huntable dinosaur. Its rich golden hide splattered with a warm mahogany brown, the iconic curvature of its silhouette, the dragging tail, the pink claws, distinctive head crest, and that soft, warbled trumpeting. It beautifully sets the stage for the carnivore's style. Recognizably Parasaurolophus in spirit, yet distinctly alien from what we know of the real Earth animal. Despite its brilliance, in my opinion, as the very first novice rank animal, it tends to get overlooked once players hit advanced or expert rank. You don't see many hunters going back out of their way to go and grind points from or trophy hunt Parasaurolophus. It can also be frustratingly difficult to hunt early on, as the game's starting weapons usually require players to get very close to a dinosaur well known for not getting close to humans. So this skittish dinosaur comes in at number 15. Coming in at number 14 is the first dinosaur ever designed for the series, the classic novice rank predator, Allosaurus. Allosaurus, in my opinion, is the perfect transition into the meat of the games, moving out of the early tier, more or less defenseless animals, and into the more dangerous beasts. It's a great stepping stone and an integral part of any new hunter's initiation. I mean, I think we've all been ambushed by a random spawn Allosaurus before. And while I do love its expectation subversion and role reversal with the Ceratosaurus as this little, medium-sized predator, the details of its design is what keeps it lower on this list for me. This was the first dinosaur ever designed for the Carnivore series, and I think it shows. It's about as generic as theropods get, nothing stands out about it. And it's even comprised of some of the most overused colors seen on theropod dinosaurs in one of the most unimaginative patternings ever. Every time I sketch my own interpretation of the carnivore's Allosaurus, I always try to give it just a little something to help it pop, whether that's expandable jaws, little brow ridge crests, or some stripes around the eye, just something to make it a little more unique than it is. Allosaurus is my favorite dinosaur in real life, and I'd love for the carnivore's iteration to be just a little more unique. But as it stands, this classic predator comes in at number 14. Moving down to the unlucky number 13 spot is the majestic sentinel of the central sector's coastlines, the amphibious Brachiosaurus. The carnivore's Brachiosaurus is iconic and set the standard for the planet's sauropods in terms of design and function. The burnt, reddish-brown patterning, the lizard-like face and eyes, the enormous bulky body with massive clawed feet, and of course, its aquatic nature and near-invincibility. Near-invincibility. This creature is a standout and wonderfully adds more life to the maps in places you might not often see many creatures. However, because it is an ambient animal, its gameplay interaction is limited, even more so because of its invincibility. It doesn't flee, it doesn't die, it doesn't react, it is just there. And now that Immortal Brachiosaurus is possible, it makes the default creature just seem a little bit too lifeless, ironically enough. Which, despite its majesty, does keep it back at number 13. Taking the number 12 spot is the mod's other aerial creature, the primitive glider pterodactylus. Based on the Crystal Palace scaly pelican depiction, pterodactylus is my favorite carnivore's pterosaur so far. The broad, leathery wings, slender neck, sharp beak, and the colors and patterning really help it stand out from the other, more compact carnivore's pterosaurs. It's also got a very unique flying style, using its broad, leathery wings to slowly and gracefully propel itself, as opposed to the more frequent and frenetic flapping pterosaurs with more narrow wings use. 
Now, of course, because it's an aerial ambient creature, its gameplay impact is pretty limited, but the animations are good, the sound work is good. This is a great high altitude seafaring pterosaur counterpart to the Western Central Sector's Pteranodon, hampered only by its aerial ambient status. And it comes in at number 12. Just missing the top 10 at number 11 is a carnivore's classic and my personal favorite among the legacy dinosaurs, the thick-headed Pachycephalosaurus. As I've said many times here on the channel, Carnivores 2 was the first game in the series I got. I didn't get the original Carnivores until about 5 or 6 years later. And when I finally got my copy of the OG Carnivores, the first new dinosaur I saw in the instruction manual was the Pachycephalosaurus, and I fell in love with it instantly. The rounded head, large reptilian eyes and claws, soft dove-like calls, and its ability to transition from a near vertical walking stance to a horizontal running stance is something still rare among carnivores dinosaurs. However, its role as the second novice rank creature in the game means it tends to get overlooked and forgotten as players advance through the roster. Its armor shielded head can make it a tricky target until more advanced weapons are unlocked. And the fact that it's not dangerous despite boasting powerful natural weapons is pretty disappointing. However, I still think it's a great alien dinosaur. Its design remains a standard for creating carnivorous creatures not often depicted in classic paleo art. And I'll always have a soft spot for this novice rank herbivore, so Pachycephalosaurus comes in at number 11. Breaking in the top 10 is the most iconic ambient animal ever, and one of the most beloved legacy creatures ever. The hefty little Moshops. It is hard to think of carnivores and not think of Moshops. It's one of the most common and abundant animals on the planet, appearing in a variety of games and mods in a variety of forms. It's also one of the few creatures in the central sector that, in real life on Earth, would have never actually encountered a dinosaur. So its presence here among so many dinosaurs helps establish the carnivore series' time and place in fiction. It's a near perfect depiction of an ambient animal, a nice little chunk, and a bit of a meme lord within the community. But because it's an ambient animal, it does have some limits as far as gameplay interaction goes. However, for performing its ambient animal role just so well, and for being just so iconic, it definitely earns its top 10 status. Moving down to number 9 is the mod's bonus animal, the iconic huntable sauropod of carnivore's legend, Seismosaurus. <laughs> Ever since Seismosaurus was rumored to be an unlockable bonus dinosaur all the way back in the days of the original Carnivores games, it's become something of a franchise legend, and finally seeing it fulfill that role in Carnivores Plus is pretty special. The design is perfectly in line with the other carnivore sauropods, borrowing a lot from retro paleo art sauropods, like the massive bodies, dragging tails, and lizard-like heads. The sound work on this thing is also top notch, as it sounds every bit as gigantic and powerful and alien as it should. Where this creature runs into trouble, for me anyway, would be the size coupled with its animations. They're not really that bad, just a bit stiff in my opinion, which can work for a creature of this size, like it's actually difficult for it to move but it's always just a bit of an immersion breaker when you see this thing clipping through the trees or making a jarringly sharp 90 degree turn. I personally feel like Amargosaurus pulled off the huntable sauropod trope a bit better, as its smaller size allows it to more believably navigate the terrain. Still, it's a great finale to Carnivores Plus, and a genuine challenge. As of recording this video, I have yet to actually take down a Seismosaurus, and that rarely happens to me with bonus animals. So Seismosaurus is definitely worthy of top 10 status, just at the lower end in my opinion, at number 9. Taking the number 8 spot is one of the most iconic and recognizable dinosaurs ever, the bus-sized Stegosaurus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Like most of the legacy dinosaurs, the carnivore Stegosaurus is iconic, having appeared in nearly every mainline game and in many mods, cementing it as one of the most widespread and successful dinosaurs on the planet. The massive submarine-shaped body, thick tail and legs, and row of small yet vibrant plates make hitting this dinosaur's head-only mortal zone a really good challenge, and makes pulling off those successful headshots so, so satisfying. It's also a great late-tier novice challenge with a deep, resonating bellow. My only real complaint with it is that it's not dangerous. Like Pachycephalosaurus, a creature this large with this many natural weapons would make easy road pizza out of any pesky human, and I still feel it would have been a reasonable transition into advanced rank as the last novice rank dangerous herbivore. Regardless, the Stegosaurus is still a great dinosaur for the world of carnivores, and comes in at number 8. Coming in at number 7 is the Beast of Burian Legend, the beautifully retro Triceratops. This hulking advanced rank herbivore is what carnivore's creature design is all about. Recognizably triceratops in spirit, yet distinctly foreign in detail, with the impossibly massive body, terrifyingly weaponized face, and fierce red eyes, elephantine limbs, thick, bumpy hide, and rough, dragging tail. This beast looks like it could easily hold its own against the planet's natural predators. And as the first aggressive and dangerous herbivore hunters encounter, it's a real challenge, especially considering most of its mortal zones are obscured by armor or sheer mass. Unfortunately, Triceratops took a 14-year hiatus from the franchise, an absence half-heartedly filled by this cheap knockoff, which I do believe hindered the trike's overall franchise impact. But the one factor that really, really hurts the trike, in my opinion, is the sound work. We've all made the jokes, this thing sounds like it's blowing its nose into a tissue, and gives a whole new meaning to the phrase, one sick triceratops. Regardless, this is one of my favorite carnivorous dinosaurs ever. It's so meaty and rugged and beautifully Burian, and it comes in at number 7. Just missing the top 5 at number 6 is the beast once worshipped for its speed, the advanced rank Velociraptor. <coughs> Velociraptor is, without a doubt, one of the most well-known dinosaurs of all time, and the carnivore's iteration is no exception drawing from the male tiger-striped velociraptors from the Lost World, and remains a beautiful example of how to take distinct pop culture dinosaur depictions and properly translate them into the game's unique art style. It's fast, it's ferocious, sleeker and more nimble than the bulkier Allosaurus, to the point where it's often fatally mistaken for a Gallimimus, and with a lore impact much more impressive than most dinosaurs ever get. This is easily one of Carnivore's greatest creatures. The fact that it couldn't hunt in packs was an unfortunate limitation of the time, but now that programmers like Ornithomimid 1 have implemented pack hunting into the Carnivore's games, the Velociraptor stands tall once again as one of the most ferocious predators on the planet, and I would love to see that pack hunting mechanic implemented here in Carnivore's Plus sometime in the future. Regardless, this speedy thief is definitely worthy of the number 6 spot. Breaking in the top 5 is arguably the most iconic dinosaur ever and the apex predator of the entire central sector, Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> the Tyrant Lizard King often gets a lot of, in my opinion, undeserved hate because of its popularity, as popular things often get. But I mean, guys, it's as popular as it is for a reason. It's fueled the imaginations and nightmares of people around the world for decades, and the Carnivore's iteration retains that level of impact, providing an impressive goal for aspiring dinosaur hunters to strive for as they rise through the ranks, and a near unrivaled source of terror for those who lack the nerves of steel required to bring one down. I mean, a part of me still gets anxious when I hear this off in the distance. <laughs> And nothing quite gets the heart rate going like seeing one of these monsters unexpectedly charging over some distant hill. 
It's the only dinosaur that's retained its legendary mortal zone throughout every single game it's been in. It's got one of the franchise's most fantastically brutal unique kill animations. It's easy to see why this was the greatest and most terrifying dinosaur for so many of us as kids. And of course I want to give it its well-deserved top 5 status. However, I do think it's fair that it just stays number 5 on this list for a couple of reasons. The design of the Carnivore's Tyrannosaurus, in my opinion, is fine. It checks off all the boxes of what makes a dinosaur properly carnivores, but it just pulls off the bare minimum, to my tastes personally. It's a fairly generic Tyrannosaur representation, where the community has done a phenomenal job at creating infinitely more unique and characterized Tyrannosaurs over the years. Plus, I personally feel that the next four dinosaurs on this list hit that carnivore sweet spot just a little better. So the King of the Dinosaurs comes in at a well-deserved number five. Coming in at number four is the snake-like revamp of an old carnivore's mod classic, Dilophosaurus. Now, I can already hear the comments. Sorry, it man, you just said you weren't including the DLC dinosaurs because they don't have sound effects, and now you're including a DLC dinosaur in this list that doesn't have sound effects? You hypocrite! Unsubscribe! And to that I say, what an excellent observation, my inquisitive friend. But you see, being me has its perks. And since this is my list, I'm gonna bend the rules a little bit because, technically, my Dilophosaurus does have sound effects. The Dilophosaurus I'm using in my Beta 1.99 version of Carnivores Plus comes sounded courtesy of my good friend Beep Beep, an excellent FMM wildlife photographer who tried his first attempt at sound engineering on the Carnivores Plus Dilophosaurus and has submitted it for official use in the next release. And since that's what I've got, that's what I'm going to use. If the sounds end up not being used in the next release, although I do hope they are, then we'll have a nice point of comparison and one more dinosaur to include on today's list, which I'm sure can't be a bad thing, right? This new redesign of Gendos' classic Dilophosaurus is infinitely more snake-like, a characteristic I've wanted to see utilized on this dinosaur for a long time. With the long, whip-like tail, thin, rough, coarse body, sharp fangs, beautiful tongue-flicking animation, and vibrant blue crests warning other creatures to keep their distance, this is about as perfectly serpentine as I could have hoped for with the Dilo. And the sound effects really hammer that home with lots of fantastic alligator and snake hisses. Where the Dilo falls a little short for me personally is in the animations, specifically the walking and attack animations. Again, personally, I've always envisioned a dinosaur this snake-like to have an exaggerated back-and-forth sway to its walk. Very fluid, very weaving in and out. Almost slithering, if you will, as best it can, all while flicking its tongue as it searches for food. And perhaps instead of the typical carnivore's leap to attack, it could rear back its long neck and head and strike like a snake would just to give it that little more individualization in the animations. I don't know, maybe that's a bit too on the nose and a bit too much to ask for, but regardless, nitpicks aside, this is a phenomenal carnivore's creature in my opinion, definitely worthy of the number four spot. Breaking into the top three is the advanced rank predator with arms even tinier than the Tyrannosaurus, Majungatholus. <laughs> So Dilophosaurus had a pretty comparatively easy transition from Reloaded to Plus, namely that it actually got to come back. But when it was announced that Carnotaurus would not be making that transition from Carnivores Reloaded to Carnivores Plus, finding a replacement that still had that same Carno feel and energy was tough. But luckily, I think Majungatholus pulls off that stocky, horned abelosaur vibe very well. The design is great, with the long yet thick body, teeny tiny arms, pebbly armored hide, bulbous throat pouch, and broad horn. This dinosaur manages to nicely stand out from the crowd. The animations are nice, the sound work is top notch, and the deep reddish brown patterning gives this carnivore a little more visual flair than the stereotypical plain green carnivores you might find on Ceratosaurus AI. 
It's also an extremely challenging dinosaur to hunt, with a very small mortal zone, a highly aggressive and even cannibalistic nature, and a name that beautifully harkens back to an outdated concept. There's really nothing wrong with this dinosaur. It's a fantastic penultimate predator that fits its role well and provides that perfect endgame challenge. And it comes in at number three. Also, I just want to point out that when it came to decide what dinosaur was going to replace Carnotaurus, it was I who suggested Majungatholus, so naturally I've got a bit of a soft spot for it, and no, I haven't let that go to my head, why do you ask? Taking the penultimate spot at number two is probably the most highly requested and innovative new addition to the carnivores universe, Therizinosaurus. <laughs> if you ask fans what animals they want to see added to the official carnivores games, the answer is usually one of three things, if not all of them, or a copy and pasted Wikipedia list of all the dinosaurs that aren't in the game yet. But usually, one of these three. Dilophosaurus, Mosasaurus, or Therizinosaurus. And the Carnivore's Plus depiction of Therizinosaurus is just stellar. I can't imagine a better Carnivore's depiction of this dinosaur. With those big, plodding feet, the thick, leathery hide, lizard-like head, and of course those iconic, meter-long claws. The sound work is great, this thing is terrifying, the animations are wonderful, and we gotta talk about this thing's behavior, oh my gosh. This is an extremely territorial dinosaur that can become highly aggressive. And when in either flight or fight mode, it actually covers its mortal spot with its huge clawed gauntlets, which is just brilliant. When humans first arrived on the dinosaur planet, Therizinosaurus typically didn't perceive them as threats until well after the eastern central sector was open for hunting, when the dinosaurs found themselves on Dino Hunt Corp's hunting roster and then actively started attacking humans, learning to protect their vulnerable areas from attack, which is just awesome! This is just an all-around near-perfect packaged dinosaur. It's an iconic creature with a perfectly canon-style design, great sounds, great animations, great lore, a presence that's felt in the game, and some of the most unique behaviors of any carnivore's dinosaur I've ever seen, and for that, Therizinosaurus definitely earns its number two spot. And now, the number one dinosaur in Carnivores Plus, in my opinion anyway, is the wonderfully characterized and painfully adorable little ambient creature, Compsognathus. Compsognathus is a dinosaur that I feel is a little underrated, probably because it just fits in so well with the Carnivores world that it might be mistaken for an official creature. Now, I don't know if this applies to everyone, but I know in my case, whenever I think of Compsognathus, this immediately comes to mind. But the Carnivore's Plus iteration is so different. It subverts expectations and really sets itself apart as a wholly original alien creature all its own. I just love its plump little body with the short rounded head, those awesome sharp spikes that run all the way down from the back to the tip of the tail, that cool grayish blue green coloration countershaded with a soft reddish pink, and those tiny little T-Rex like two clawed arms. It just gives this dinosaur one of the most unique and characterized designs of any creature on the planet. There's also that killer cute combination of the sound work and the animations. That little squeak it gives out as it leaps up into the air to catch insects is just heart melting. And quite like the Leptictidium of Far North, I've never actually seen the Compi's death animation. It's too adorable for me to pull the trigger. I know it might seem blasphemous to rank an ambient creature like this above such impactful dinosaurs like Majungatholus, Dilophosaurus, Therizinosaurus, or Tyrannosaurus, and that's fair enough. But when it comes down to it, I really feel like the Compi has it all. A great texture and colors, wonderful sounds and animations, a constant presence in the environment, plus it's just adorable. It's my favorite ambient animal ever, one of my absolute favorite creatures in this entire mod, and I think it absolutely earns its number one spot. All right, so there you go, guys. This is my personal ranking of all the more or less completed creatures in the beta 1.99 release of Carnivores Plus. I know this list might have seemed a little light on brand new Carnivores content. We covered a lot of legacy Carnivores content today, and I do apologize for that. 
but I wanted to at least get a base list established. So as dinosaurs receive updates and new dinosaurs come in, we've already set the standard for who goes where and why and can then adjust as more changes are added. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. If you did, please consider leaving a like. And again, this is just my personal biased subjective ranking of all the carnivores dinosaurs in this current release. Now I want to hear from you guys. What are yours? Which new DLC dinosaurs are you most excited about getting completed in a future release? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. And thanks as always for watching guys, I always appreciate your continued support and likes and comments and feedback on these videos, and as long as you guys keep watching this content, I will for sure keep making it. Thanks again guys, you are all truly the best, and I will see you guys next time.